All right, welcome back. So some updates. I uh, ran into Lyra, Lyra, whatever her name is, and uh, went through a whole catching tutorial. Caught a Pidgey, trained at the level five, as you do before you know starting his adventures, and I made it to Cherry Grove. I guess now officially we can begin our journey. And the first gym leader, of course, in this region, is um. Uh, Flying type dude, Falconer, Falconer, or Falconer, or whatever. Yeah, we still don't have Ember for some reason. We're level nine now, but we have an Adamant Cyndaquil, so I guess it really doesn't matter, or it still matters, but not that much. You know, run through this region with a physical Typhlosion. Not ideal, but that's what we got. So I decided to go with uh, Pidgey instead of Hoot Hoot. I know I mentioned this in the last episode. I decided to go with Pidgey instead of Hoot Hoot because Hoot Hoot is the worst generation bird ever. I mean, Pidgey's like next on the rung, I guess. Yeah, Hoo Hoo's the worst one. The developers should be ashamed for making that thing. They really should have given knocked out like a mega evolution or something to make it good. But we're not gonna dwell on that. It's also interesting that, you know, I really don't know if the trainers kept their Pokemon between Generation 2 and the remakes, but it's also interesting that these trainers are using Generation 1 Pokemon instead of just using like a Hoot Hoot and a Sentra here, you know, to sell the new Pokemon, to sell the fact that these are new games. But at least we got a level out of it, so... I wonder if I can go and catch a Mary before Falconer. If I can even access that area. Pretty sure you're not a trainer. If I remember correctly from Crystal. I remember when these games came out that it was such a cool thing. Uh, the Pokemon following you. Nice little feature that every Pokemon follows you. Every single one of them. If you had an Arceus on your team in the first slot, it would be outside the Pokeball following you. Too bad that they can't do that anymore for some reason. I really, I would really love to know some of their development decisions with these games. Like, why they take away features between generations. Like, you know, fan favorite features. Like, what's the, what's the, what's the decision made there? Do they run analytics too on these features? Like, oh man, a lot of players seem to like this feature versus this feature. We got potions just in case, so...
But I'm, one of the members of this team is going to be an Eevee. And I know in Pokemon Crystal I tried to evolve an Eevee to either an Espeon or an Umbreon, I'm not picky. And it did not happen. Like, I couldn't get it to evolve before we got to the Elite Four, before we even finished the game. But hopefully it'll change this go round. The whole options of haircuts and soothe bells and, you know, those happiness increase increasing things. Hopefully it'll be a lot smoother this time around. Pidgey so far is doing a fine job. Gonna get some additional training in Bell Sprout Tower, so. Cyndaquil still needs Ember. Or at least some, you know, special move. Ember's gonna come in handy against Falconer. For no, you know, apparent reason other than the fact that you'll get stabbed. And, you know. Gotta stop saying, you know. You know, you know. I wonder if there are any people who legitimately to chose Chikorita to start these games off with. I wonder what that experience was like. Like one such example is uh, the Versus Seeker. They had it in this generation, but they didn't have it. Like they had it in uh, platinum, diamond, and pearl, but they didn't have it in this in these games. I get it, you know the whole Poke of Gear calling you to the battle thing. That was a thing. I just mean you have to keep it. Do you actually battle her in this in these games? Oh my goodness! What are we? What are we? <laughs> what are those? by the school. You usually have to go by the school in almost all of these games, so might as well stop by. No. I I play these games Han style. Alright, let's just go by the tower. no elevators here, They're, all these old people are legitimately climbing ladders every day. I mean, more power to them, but geez, the 21st century, probably, in these games. I really don't know what year they take place, or if it's even concurrent to our world. I say our world, the real world. Bell Sprouts are the perfect fodder Pokemon for my team right now. Do 
these Pokemon being this weak, I wonder how, uh, what level Falconer's Pokemon are at. Not really giving you a lot of experience here. I wonder if I can get a uh, Quilapha before that gym battle. It's in the level 14, I believe. Joey's calling, but I don't care. Can't just be quick to pick up the phone when everybody calls. Special attack has overtaken attack, even though it's an animate nature. This is just amazing training for Pidgey right now. Pokemon aren't too strong, too bulky. They have nothing to really hurt them, and we get decent experience from them. So that's like the three pillars of great training. I think that's three. I didn't really count them out as I was saying them. Huh, I pretty much I probably I probably said this during my crystal playthrough, but uh yeah, I think Johto is just banking on, uh, like Gold and Silver is just banking on nostalgia at this point. But if you really look back into it, it's like, this region wasn't all that good. The best part about these games was the fact that you can actually go back from Kanto and take on those gym leaders. But Johto as a region just wasn't great. There's nothing memorable about this region. <laughs> And the new Pokemon that they introduced in Generation 2 just don't really stand out. Like, the only Generation 2 Pokemon that. I'm gonna say the only one, but like quite a few. Like, I personally like the Typhlosion line. Espeon and Umbreon are pretty solid. Tyranitar line is pretty nice. But other than that, that's like the standouts in my mind. Every region should have a standout Pokemon. I'll we'll just keep Pidgey in. It'd be great if I get Wing Attack, but I don't think I'm gonna get Wing Attack anytime soon. Oh yeah, I forgot there are wild Pokemon in here. Oh. I wouldn't be opposed to getting a Ghastly, but it would never be able to evolve into a Gengar, so... I'm surprised we're not Bellsprout's just in this tower. And why do they call it Sprout Tower? Obviously for Bellsprout, but... Like, why? Do they revere the bell sprouts here? Now it's the boosted Pokemon. It 
still don't pose any kind of threat. Cynical is pretty solid so far. I would say Pidgey isn't half bad either, but I mean Pidgey is just beating up grass types. Okay, Let's see if we get to test Pidgey's range here. Gotta take on your generation counterpart. This is new school. I really don't know why they didn't make Hoot Hoot like psychic and flying or something. Or at least part psychic type. Does it just make sense for the aesthetic of the owl? Owls are. Like the symbol of wisdom. Right, not bad. in your pocket? Like, how does the escape rope work? Maybe I should have healed up Pidgey before this. Oh well. I'm gonna reserve Pidgey for the grass types. He has something other than a grass type. Pidgey might falter. Tackle. Oh, I, I forgot Tackle had a base of 35 back in the day. Now it has like, what, 50? And we're gonna keep uh, Cyndaquil in. Oh, the Hypnosis game. Concern. It's just annoying. Sleep, paralysis, and confusion are like the worst status conditions. Oh, and infatuation. That one sucks too. <laughs> Go the distance because we're adamant natured. Alright, this has Pidgey written all over it. Or at least it's about to. Can 
can get the level. Yep. Don't need it, bub. At least I don't think so. Maybe we'll just use that right now because, you know. Oh yeah, and why doesn't my rival's Pokemon follow him around? Or, you know, any other trainer's Pokemon follow them around? Why is it only me? Do they have like leash laws in the Pokemon world? Alright, those are some philosophical questions to answer in the next episode as, as we take on Falconer. Yeah, I think he's next. Catch you guys in that one. Peace.